Hello and welcome back guys. Bushcraft family here and uh, as some may know or may not know I put a poll up yesterday to see if um, there was more interest in the ports and what's going on at the ports and the trucking and all all this to do with our, our um, fiasco of a shipping issues and in our supply chain and whatnot and it pretty much everybody wanted to, to get more information on this well because I, I get information on this stuff daily um, I get stuff sent to me daily on this it, be it from people that actually work on the docks or at the, on the ports there or the maritime themselves uh, send out newsletters and things like that uh, because I am a member of of the maritime uh, on on the the west coast that is um, I'm still waiting to get approved on the, the the east coast but I still I still got information on both coasts and some on the go, the golf when once there is uh, something worth posting a video about. So let's go ahead and uh, let me switch this over real quick, and we'll get started on our first thing here. And this this is very interesting. Again, uh, L.A. and Long Beach delay port congestion fees once again. Yes, and as you can see. It's uh, official. Uh, it's going to be thirty-seven percent on all the of all the all, all the containers and stuff. There, thirty thirty-seven percent of those are getting fined already. And as you can see, it's a little bit better than previous. Um, the fees have had their intended effect of getting users to clear long stored containers from terminals according to port officials containers that dwell more than nine days from local truck uh, drillage <laughs> i can't say that word and more than six days for rail moves are liable for a $100 per container increasing by $100 per day um, overstays of those durations previously accounted for 40% of all containers on terminals so you have to think there are thousands of thousands of thousands of containers as you can see this picture doesn't give it justice there's thousands of thousands of containers so 40 percent of the containers there yesterday got fined a hundred dollars per container 40 <laughs> percent that's almost half of the containers there that is that is ridiculous and where do you think the price is going to go once they get have to pay those fines where who, who's covering this this fee or, or this fine um yes the companies will and then it'll go right down the line to the stores and then to us the consumer will be paying for this and this is is as you know, the administration said, administration as I'm sp speaking of, Biden and his merry crew has said that they have fixed things. It's all better now. Um, it's not getting better. <laughs> the, these, this is stuff that's not getting made up in thin air. This is actual facts that's coming from the docks or the ports right now and it is just horrible and 
they had this done before and the companies themselves said they're really don't they really don't care about these fines because they'll pass it on to the consumers this was already said um, in an interview with them so this is what we have to look for and it's not getting any better <laughs> we're at 40 percent of the the containers I don't know if you guys understand how much containers are on those two ports in California so many I mean tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of containers 40% of those are getting fined and the next day they get fined another hundred dollars and a hundred dollars after that um, I know I keep repeating it, but it, it's just like 40%. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, Let, let's, let's go over on uh, the, the East Coast, shall we? Um, the port of Savannah ramps up container capacity as cargo delays ease. Um, kind of. <laughs> um, they're still getting a lot. Um, Officials pull forward developing development of 230 acres of container handling space pop-up yards. Um, so that they've 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 increased their area where they're at. So, and th this is this is a recent picture here. This is today's picture. That this is just Savannah right here, <laughs> and that and and there's more over on the the other side here but look at these containers um one two three four five six seven seven containers high and that it, it's higher on this side and they usually don't have containers that high um normally it's max of four four to five usually you see just two too high and it, it, it's it's it just it blows my mind how bad our su our supply chain is and just since the beginning of this year um, we've seen this um, sure it was a little delayed last year even though we had a major uh, setback in uh, February March when everything was closed down um, except essential workers and whatnot but um, you sit there and we were fine we had shortages here and there but we started getting back to to normal with that and then BAM January February and right at the end of February was when I first started noticing these trends of the ships on the coast. And I, 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 I done a video on it. And I also said that, um, which I was wrong, I said that we would get, it, it was going to double by January or June or July. And I said, we'd be getting like, 60 ships out there <laughs> boy was I wrong um, it was double that so yeah and congestion at the ports of Savannah continued to improve last week and infusion of 1.6 million dollars shipping units of yard capacity in the next six months should further enhance cargo flow according to uh the georgia port authority and yes that that's the georgia port authority is the one i'm still trying to wait still trying to get approved on to get their their files and stuff so shouldn't be too long but they are doing a lot better now than they were um a few months ago and like I said, there are um, their waiting at birth has fell from 
it, it was 15, now it's 13. It was a, as high as 23 in the beginning of November, so they're starting to improve quite a bit. Um, and they're not so AI efficient over there. It's more manual, actual people going out there knowing their thing. Um, the Long Beach or LA one, they have AI robots that run the trucks, set them up and all this stuff. Um, the main thing is they have cranes or the, the crane workers actually are working over there. They're not robots or anything, but yeah. And here is one of the pop-up uh and re re retailers open pop-up container yards to bypass Savannah ports, uh, port jams. Georgia officials in talks with freight railroad and spillover yard in North Carolina as cargo backlog improves. And as you can see, <laughs> there is a lot. And this is Savannah here. This This is... Um, this is more than they've ever seen themselves also, but still, they're actually moving some stuff out. Now, um, there was some issues there. Well, there has been a lot of issues with um, the workers on the ships. Um, there was a ship headed to Savannah, and they had to stop at Mexico to unload five of their the shipmates and because they come down with the sickness everybody knows what the sickness is um, so they had to be offloaded so they were already down five and believe it or not there is not that many uh, workers on those those ships so and th this is bec becoming a, a normal thing um, they cut through to get to the east side through the Mexican uh, canal down there. Um, and they're finding that they have been unloading a few of their their workers because of the sickness that, that, that they're bringing from um, China. <laughs> So that's a, that's a major issue, and sometimes they actually have to wait over there. Now the the next thing is um, I'm going to switch this over. Now the ports on LA um, they had reached another high uh, yesterday. They had a um, ninety six container ships container ships not all the ships down there 96 container ships and that didn't count for the ships that were waiting further out there were more ships waiting further out and a lot of them are t turning off their beacons so that they don't get fined for causing pollution in in the bay area or the, the coast um, a lot of them are waiting down um by Mexico again so so they don't get in trouble and then they move in when they when they see a spot open so things are still not getting any better with this so um, again this is something that we're going to have to to just work out and try to get as much much preps and stuff as we can because e even if it's you're you're not getting preps for in case a winter time your power goes off or there's another lockdown or whatever the case may be the government shuts down whatever the case may be even if you're not prepping for that reason alone um, prep for cheaper prices um, just think if you prepped 100 pounds of ground beef 
in January last year, um, or this year rather, compared to 100 pounds of ground beef now. Just think of the money you you would have saved for that, and that's that's one good reason by itself. And we may have other reasons to prep for, but just think of it as just saving money, if anything. If you if you don't if you're new to this and you're thinking about it, um, think it of it as just saving money. Um, just store this stuff up until the prices are going to go up. We've done seen it. Um, Forty percent are getting fined. Forty percent of the containers <laughs> are going to be getting fined. They are fined today. Tomorrow will be another hundred dollars, and so forth and so forth. So prices will go up. It has nothing to do with um, truck drivers or anything. It's just there. It's so congested. They keep getting more in, more in. They unload more. It, it's just it needs fixed, and our administration is not doing what they say they are doing. Um, facts are facts. But other than that, guys, I want to thank everybody for um, all the support and everything. It's it's really really appreciated. Until next time, God bless.